Hey guys, Comet Drill here, bringing you another furry film review. First of all, uh, sorry about the squeaky chair. I'm not sure if I can edit this out. <laughs> uh, anyway, all films I review will be told from my personal point of view of them, and will feature at least one character that is an animal or animal like in nature in the main cast. What I mean by this is that they play a major role and not just there in the background. And they all will have a typical speaking part. If you have any movies you would like me to review, put them in the comments below with hashtag furry film review or hashtag film review depending on how much you want to type and to make sure that I don't ramble on like in my last review which should be in a link somewhere above me I got an actual script this time in addition to this at the end of my review I shall tell you if I think it is brilliant only up a little squishy light bulb here. E. E. Or deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish. Okay, ready? On to the show. We all heard about Robin Hood at one point or another in our lives. He stole from the rich and gave to the poor. He is suave and falls in love with the foxy love interest made Marion. I mean that literally. She's actually a red fox. Thanks in this movie. In fact, all the characters are animals. Still don't know what I'm talking about? This Disney film from 1973 aptly titled Robin Hood, which I have right here. Big shout to Fox Mitten who donated this film to us. We open with Robin and his best friend Lil John having some fun in the woods when they are ambushed by the Sheriff of Nottingham. They get away easily enough, although not with a little peril, like an arrow through Robin's hat. Soon they run into Prince John, our bad guy on parade to collect taxes. And Prince John is a massive flyer of a lion. Robin and Little John disguise themselves as a pair of fortune tellers or gypsies depending on how you want to look at it. While you know, Robin distracts the prince and by telling him his fortune, Little John robs the gold-plated carriage of every gold scrap and bed gem in the carriage. And Prince John's faithful advisor, Sir Hits, which looks something like Ka from The Jungle Book, they tries to warn him. Prince John doesn't take this kindly and stops it her hips into a bag. Well, basket, really. You know what I'm saying. And they proceed to rob the good prince of all his wealth, including in more than even a little better than his crown and undergarments. And they managed to escape the prince all the while. Uh, being shot up at, at being shot at with arrows. Meanwhile, back in town, there's a family having a birthday celebration and for a little funny boy named Skippy. And his present from the whole family, this mom, town blacksmith, who's really just visiting. And I wanna say twenty-seven have been wrapped in the different ages. I didn't actually count them. Um, gave him a single farling. 
which is a fair bit of money considering in the time. When the sheriff comes in, saying happy birthday, and proceeds to take the filing as taxes before proceeding to take the little bit of money the blacksmith has as in a uh, cast on his leg. Robin Hood comes in disguised as a blind old beggar before the sheriff proceeds to collect taxes from him as well. After the sheriff leaves, Robin reveals that he is in fact there. there. Robin reveals himself off to the family. In order to cheer up the little boy, it's Kippy. He gives him a toy boy, bow, and arrow. Boy and arrow. What am I trying to say? Bow and arrow. As well as its own hat. Skippy, two of his sisters, and a turtle. The <laughs> so name Toby go out to play, okay, where they accidentally shoot their new arrow into the yard where Maid Marian and her lady Witty was playing a game of badminton. Marian invites the kids into the yard to play with her. Her where? Uh, they pretend to be the sheriff, the lady in waiting pretends to be the sheriff, while Skippy getting to be Robin Hood rescues the fair maiden, taking her into a little grove of trees in the, the courtyard. Not too far away, Robin is also daydreaming about the fair maiden, and proceeding to burn the food that he was trying to cook for dinner. As little John is trying to cheer up uh, Robin, Friar Tuck, like our local uh, priest, is rolls into town. Well, not real town, or the forest camp, but you get the idea. And gives the duo, duo uh, the news of an archery contest with a reward uh, of a kiss from the fair maiden. Robin goes disguised as a stork. With only a three real characters of notice. A tur turtle, oh, which is Toby's dad, the sheriff of Nottingham, and Robin Stork. Robin proves he's skilled, oh, while the sheriff has to cheat. Little John disguises himself as a duke, again, given the good graces of Prince. John. And where he quickly learns that the whole thing is a trap. That meant to lure out Robin Hood. Sir Hiss quickly figures out that the Duke is in fact one of the robbers that stole from Prince John earlier and tries to warn him, but he is a normal slapstick between Sir Hiss and Prince John. So Sir Hiss goes slithering off to find definitive proof. He quickly discovers that the story is in fact Robin Hood. And he, he goes back to warn and Prince John and of this. That blacksmith and Friar Tuck take Sir Hiss and stuff him into a, a barrel of ale. That's an alcoholic drink if you don't know that. After Robin successfully he wins the contest, Prince John reveals that he figured out that the stork, the one with the most masterful skill in archery, was Robin, and has the scar season. And Maid Marian speaks out how to try to beg for Robin's life. It, the prince initially shows that he is willing in, to be a good sport about it. But then immediately shows its true colors by ordering Robin's execution. Before little John proceeds to take him hostage at night point. The sheriff discovers this as an attack little John. And now with the prince freed, he proceeds to order the guard to attack the two outlaws. 
and they proceed to enter the battle chase. With the Rhino Guard trampling everything. And including a tent. And as well as the stage of the a royal box. With Prince John stuck in his throne. Um, before getting slammed into the wall of the keep. Little John and Robin proceed to escape. And shine out down with the phony king of England. And after the uh, chase is an escape, the prince finds her hiss in the barrel of ale. So Anne proceeds to strangle the poor serpent. Back in the Sherwood Forest, Robin and Marion had a romantic walk. Like, this scene seriously brought a tear to my eye while watching it. Once they make it back to the clearing, practically the whole town celebrates with song and dance to the tune of the Phony King of England. Seriously, you need to hear this scene once in your life, folks. The day after, the sheriff comes into the castle to Hanton, some Texas, where the prince hears the song. The prince then proceeds to order that the whole town's taxes be raised in retaliation to them making fun of him. And those who couldn't pay get thrown into the jail. Decker jail. Isn't that a fun thing? <laughs> at the local church, the good friar was is ringing the bell. At the church mice are planning to tune on the organ. Wait a second. I thought church mice was supposed to be quiet. It, I mean, there's a whole sign around that, yet these ones are playing the organ. <sighs> okay, back to the movie. The sheriff comes in to take the last coin from the poor box. The friar tuck is righteously furious. And then proceeds to attempt to kick the sheriff out of the church. He loses and gets thrown in jail. Oh, with the rest of the townsfolk. Back at the castle, Prince John hears that Friar Tuck is captured and thinks of a plan to lure out Robin Hood by sending in the good friar to the gallows to be hunted. Robin once again appears as a blind old man and learns of the trap. Robin and Little John plan the jailbreak to free everybody. Robin succeeds in stealing the keys from the napping sheriff. Letting Lil John go rescue the prisoners while he scales the tower or to <coughs> Prince John's chamber and where he's literally sleeping with his money. Firing an arrow now uh, towards the prison cell with rope tied to it and they proceed to make a conveyor belt. Where Robin ties bags of gold well, to the rope and just send them over to the prison and they send it back. And empty rope back. As they are getting ready to take off, Robin discovers, hey wait, there's one more bag. I mean, directly under uh, Prince John's head. I can't think that's comfortable. Do you? I mean, there's a literal pile of money. Coins, not the dollar. Coins. Oh, well, there's card game but I'm not going to argue with it. Robin attempts to make an escape, but not without being safe. On the mass escape, They'll be the turtle proves why shells rule when dealing with sharp pointy objects. When Robin returns to rescue a straggler, he's trapped in the castle by the prince's men. The, tra the sheriff tries to fight Nate Robin with a burning stick which proceeds to burn most of the castle down. After a close call being shot at by arrows, where he's thought to have been killed, Skippy soon spots Robin, and as he climbs out the river, ragged, ragged, and soaked to the bone, but still alive. And everyone is happy except for the prince, who, after hearing that his points out, he just proceeded to, he had destroyed his mother's castle. Uh, chases the serpent around and with stake intending to club him to death. Yes, the king, who left the prince in charge, returned and threw his the sheriff 
and the prince into jail, where they proceed to form um, a rock smashing gang, like in the old movies. It's Robin marries Marion and goes off into the sunset with Lil John and Skippy taken along. The good king in and find its humor that he now has an outlaw for an in law. That's it for this movie. If you have any movies you would like me to review, put them in the comments below with hashtag furry film review or hashtag film review. Or if you just disagree or agree with my opinion on this movie, let me know. As for my opinion, if I think it's brilliant or deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish. In case you can't tell by my review of this, I think this thing is actually brilliant. Alright, that's it for this time. For real. Now, if you like what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Hit that bell for notifications for when my next video airs. Leave a like or maybe a comment. And I hope to see you all next time. Johnny.